All right, hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. My name is John Hammond, and this is another YouTube video. This time, exploring some of the Over the Wire war games. You can check them out at overthewire.org. And let's get started with just the kind of the easy start is uh, Bandit. That's the first war game they kind of recommend, um, really, when you're just getting started. Um, they say it's aimed at absolute beginners. We'll teach you the basics needed to be able to play other war games and improve your cybersecurity skill. You can read through all this if you really, really want to, but I'll probably just run through a lot of it and try and teach and showcase what I'm doing as we go along. Um, level zero is just the very first, the start of the war game. Um, it knows, okay, the goal of this level is just for you to log into the game using SSH, so Secure Shell. Um, they give you a host name here, bandit.labs.overthewire.org, and the port is specifically uh, 20... Oh my goodness, why am I blanking on 2,220. Holy crap. <laughs> I don't know why I just didn't even know how to read those numbers in the normal English way. <laughs> Alright, uh, username is bandit0, and password in this case is just bandit0. So we can just log in, and then go to level 1 to figure out how to beat this, etc. So we just need to use SSH. If you have not heard of that before, you can check out the Wikipedia article on it, but it is just a protocol... Um, for kind of doing remote control and actually accessing another computer from your own. So I'm in Linux right now, and that's is what going. That's what makes over the wire um, pretty pretty simple and pretty easy to do is having a Linux terminal because it is all in Linux itself. So let's go ahead and make a directory for us to work in called over the wire, and let's make a Bandit folder because that's the war game that we're going to be working on. I'm going to keep track of these uh, usernames just in their own file here, and username and password. So the username will just be that in itself or the file name and the password will just be inside. So I can do easy things like SSH and SSH pass. If you haven't used SSH pass before, it's pretty neat. Um, let me show you it. It's a non-interactive SSH password provider. So rather than every single time, if we were to SSH bandit zero at bandit.labs.overthewire.org. If you haven't used this SSH command before, we're using our username at the host name. So it kind of looks like an email address, um, but that's how we can specify that's the user I want to log into because otherwise we'd try and log in as just um, the current user that we're working with, like John in my case. I'll try and make this connection, but it won't work because, oh, okay, maybe it will. Cool. You'll see I'm trying to log in as john at bandit.labs at overthewire.org, but we need to specify we're using bandit zero. Cool. And SSH, it said the war game is running on port 200 and 2,220, what? I don't even freaking know these numbers. So, okay. <laughs> the one with a lot of twos and a zero at the end. <laughs> 2,220. Um, so we need to specify that for SSH as well. We can check out the man page if you don't really know how to do that, but... It says here the port is just specified with a tag P argument. Tag P tag here. Q to break out of the man page. Tag P two 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 zero, and now it prompts us for bandit zero password, and we can use bandit zero to log in, just like that. You'll see this giant message of the day here, where they say welcome to the website, welcome to over the wire. Um, there are a lot of war games here, and they're denoting how a lot of the levels are stored in the file system, as well as in the passwords, and they're in etc. That pass, that war game name, and then pass following that. You can see the temp directory is uh, accessible for you. Um, you cannot write in the home directories as kind of a normal for any war game, but we can work in the temp directory just like that. Don't leave your stuff lying around and we'll just run through it. We'll get into more of the cool stuff in uh, later war games, but Bandit, we can just run through the simple, easy-to-use Linux terminal stuff. I know I'm already running pretty late in the length of this in this video, but I want to show you SSH pass. So if we were to use our Bandit0 file name, it's just, I'm catting out the file, and the content of the file is just Bandit0, but take my word for it. If we were to just use this with backticks, that's using bash is command substitution, so that echoes out and is replacing whatever this is. It's replacing what's inside the backticks with the actual output of this command. So cat bandit zero is going to replace everything in here with bandit zero. And we'll use this for later when we have other passwords that are just in like a bandit one file or a bandit two file, etc. So we can use SSH pass now. If you don't have it installed, it should just be sudo apt install SSH pass. Use apt-get if you need to. 
can use tech Y update if you need to. I hit enter when it asks you, do you want to do this? Yes or no, blah, blah, blah. But that's how you can do it. I shouldn't have to because it's already installed. It'll ask you for your password if you're the first time you run in sudo. Again, run through the basic stuff in case you've never done this before. Um, so now we can SSH pass. We use tag P to know the password that we're using. And in that case, we'll use our command substitution, just like we did with the backticks. And SSH pass actually requires the real um, SSH command following it, which is kind of weird. Uh, I want to see if they show you an example here. I guess they don't. Whatever. But you do end up using SSH and then the rest of your original SSH syntax here. We'll run through the easy ones to start off with because I know this video is getting long. Remember, we'll use our TAC P here and 2,220. <laughs> I can actually read it. All right. Um, if you haven't used SSH pass before on a host um, that you haven't already accepted the like RSA key for, uh, do just the regular SSH command to begin with. Um, so you can hit yes and enter and accept the SSH key. But I've already done that, so we can just use SSH pass tag P, where we would have our password. Um, we're just going to replace it kind of as an argument here, but we're using command substitution and the backticks to replace it just through the file name. And I hit enter, and we're logged in, just like that. Don't have to enter a password or anything. Okay, so um, this level just says check out level 1. And it says, okay, the password is stored in the file called readme, located in the home directory. We see it there, ls. Let's just cat it out. And there's the password for the next level. I'm going to copy and paste that, put that in bandit1, paste it in there. And now we can use the exact same command, change the user, and just change the file that we're catting out to. And now we can just log into the next one. Now you can see I'm bandit1. So what is the prompt for this one? Okay, this... Password is uh, stored in this file uh, with a hyphen as its name. Okay, let's uh, try and cat that out. But you can see nothing is really happening because that hyphen is actually a symbol in Linux and kind of the Unix file systems and stuff to denote standard input, to denote that file stream uh, zero, zero standard input, um, that is your input on the keyboard. And it's not really a file, it's just a um, file descriptor for standard input, for your actual keyboard uh, input. So that's why if you were to just run cat with no arguments, by default it does that exact same thing, just reading from standard input. But using cat hyphen as an argument is just also doing the exact same thing. Hyphen, when we want it to refer to our file name, we're actually just unfortunately getting standard input. You can see this if we try to run the file command um, on this on that hyphen again, there's an issue. It says, oh, okay, it read input from our command prompt, from our command line, and then it says, oh, standard input, that was just ASCII text. If we try to use a file asterisk to denote this file here in the current path, it would say, uh, what's going on? It's still reading from standard input. So the way we can actually read this file is just denoting it from a relative path. We can say cat the period to say our current directory and a forward slash to note we're working within that directory and the file name here, just the for, just the hyphen. Cool. Now we've got that password. Copy, paste that, put that in bandit2, just as a file name. We will change the username that we're logging in with, etc. And we'll move to bandit2. I uh, am using the control key and the arrow keys just to move through my prompt very quickly in case you didn't know. Um, and we'll check out what the prompt is for this one. Okay, so the password for the next level is stored in a file called spaces in this file name. This isn't too hard. We can ls. We see it there. We can just cat this out. And if we could start to type it, we could um, hit tab to autocomplete. And that'll fill out the rest of the file name for us. And you'll notice using backslashes right before every space character to try and escape that space and to have the command line actually interpret it that well. Because if you were to just try cat spaces in this file name, it will say, oh, I can't read this file spaces. I can't read this file in. I can't read this file this. Because it's trying to tokenize all of these individual words as arguments and as things you're giving to cat, to the cat command, the cat program. So we can cat with spaces in this file name. Remember, I used tab to autocomplete here. And we can get the password just like that. Or, if we wanted to use the 
single quotes or double quotes here, whatever way we want to determine, okay, this is a full string that I'm going to pass as one argument here. If we're using the quotes, it'll tell cat that this is a whole argument. This in itself is one argument. So that will work just fine. And we can leave the spaces without being escaped with the backslashes. Cool. Okay, let's store that as bandit three. And let's call the video uh, quits right here because we are going pretty long. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed these. Um, I think they're pretty small, pretty simple, but um, they are getting into the war games like Over the Wire and Bandit that you are going to see all the time in the Capture the Flag scene. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, join me in the next video.